Hi, I'm Alyssa. And I'm Jason. And today we're going to be discussing the evolution of the mitochondria and the chloroplast. This can be explained by the endosymbiotic theory, which states that both the mitochondria and chloroplast likely evolved from engulfed prokaryotes that once lived as independent organisms. So let's take a closer look at each individual organelle as they stand alone. So the function of the mitochondria is to produce ATP, which makes it the powerhouse of the cell. And it does this by harnessing energy from oxidized <clears throat> food molecules <laughs> such as glucose and to make it into usable forms of energy for cellular processes around the cell. So if we look at the structure of the mitochondria and how it relates to a prokaryote, which is, which is explained by the endosymbiotic theory, it has a double membrane, so it has an outer, an inner, it has ribosomes, and it has circular DNA. It's really interesting because similarly to the mitochondria, the chloroplast also has similar structures to prokaryotes. Just like it's also double membrane bounded with both an outer and an inner membrane. It also contains ribosomes and its own unique circular DNA. So the function of the chloroplast inside its host cell is that it's the site of photosynthesis. And so this biological process takes place here in these circular stacks of granum, which make up one tall thylakoid. And so during photosynthesis, the chloroplast converts sunlight into usable energy, just like the mitochondria, to fuel further cellular processes. And so we pose this question, why would an ancestral eukaryote even engulf a mitochondria or chloroplast in the first place? Well, let's look at this figure right here for the endosymbiotic theory. So here we have an, an, an anaerobic uh, ancestral eukaryote that engulfed an aerobic bacterium, which is the ancestor to the mitochondria. And then once it's done this, it now becomes an aerobic uh, eukaryote with now having mitochondria in it for its cellular processes. And for plant cells and algal cells, it was able to use photosynthetic bacterium, which, which was engulfed by this, and now this evolved into chloroplast, which now make it a photosynthetic eukaryote. In addition to this endosymbiotic theory that Jason just mapped out, some other supporting evidence to this theory is that both the mitochondria and the chloroplast replicate through fission, just like bacteria cells. In fact, the host eukaryotes actually have to regulate the tendency for the mitochondria and chloroplast to rapidly replicate, just like bacteria do. Secondly, if a mitochondria or a chloroplast is depleted inside the host cell, the cell cannot remake them, suggesting that both these organelles likely evolved independently outside of the host cell, as we showed here. So to sum up what we said, there are many similarities between prokaryotes and mitochondria and chloroplasts, and they've even evolved in such a way that one cannot function without the other.